Hi, AJ and I are here to talk to you about the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere is the layer of the atmosphere that consists of all the water in the atmosphere. So this includes lakes, rivers, streams, oceans, and any other type of frozen water or gas, so water vapor. Um, the term hydrosphere is said to have originated from the Greek words that mean water and sphere. Earth's hydrosphere includes the water on the surface. It also includes underground water, which is aquifers and wells. 70% um, of the Earth's surface is water, so this is the majority of the Earth, while the other 30% is land. Furthermore, this layer is of great importance as it plays a major role in the survival of all life forms. The remaining portion that is frozen water includes glaciers, ice caps, and icebergs. It's referred to as the cryosphere, so any frozen water on the Earth is the cryosphere, not the hydrosphere. Water is said to be in constant motion and it moves the hydrosphere in a cycle. This is the water cycle. The cycle is referred to as the hydrological cycle. It is a natural phenomenon wherein water evaporates into the atmosphere and it condenses to form clouds. This is followed by precipitation in the form of rain, snow, sleet, or hail. This water is then collected in lakes, rivers, and oceans. The process of evaporation occurs on the surface of these water bodies, thus repeating the entire cycle over and over again. The hydrosphere is so important because it's essential for all life forms to keep living. That means that all of the humans on the earth need it to drink and other life forms need it to live in, such as oceans and lakes and streams. Hi, welcome to Science Jokes with Adrian. And Lexi. Lexi, what did one ocean say to the other ocean? Oh, I don't know, Adrian. What did it say? Nothing. It just waved. Huh. I'm Phoenix today, and we are going to show you what the hydrosphere looks like, but small scale with regular household items. Um, we have a clear bowl, which represents the atmosphere, um, warm water in a mug, salt, saran wrap, and ice. So first, you're going to take your warm water and slowly pour it into the bowl. Set it to the side, and you're gonna take your salt, and add some to cover the whole surface area. The salt is gonna represent the beach or a body of the land near a body of water. Then you're gonna take your empty bowl, an empty bowl. This represents the land. Place it in there. Then we're gonna take our saran wrap, which represents the clouds, cover the whole thing. So we'll take our ice now and put it on the top, right over the, our land. Now our ice is gonna represent the cool atmosphere of the clouds and so we're gonna let it sit for about five to ten minutes but already if you'll look you can see the condensation rising and if when you leave it for about five to ten minutes a lot of the water will actually evaporate up onto the clouds and that shows us how the hydrosphere works and how water will be evaporated into the atmosphere, the clouds and the cool atmosphere, and then it'll start to drip down, which shows us precipitation. Hey okay guys, so we waited about five to 10 minutes, and as you can see, the evaporation from the ocean, lake, or stream has risen up to the clouds, and we can see that it now is going to, little water droplets are forming on the cloud from the ice being the cool atmosphere, and the bowl being the, the um, land, it's going to eventually precipitate onto the land and then it will be considered um, groundwater when it runs from the land into streams, sewages, reservoirs, and lakes, things like that. And the water cycle will just continue to go back over as the water is evaporated from the water source, sources and um, Precipitates again. Hey guys, we're back with sign jokes with Adrian. And Lexi. Lexi, what do you call water that's healthy for you? I don't know. What do you call Adrian? Well water.
Florida regulators are withdrawing a set of controversial standards for how much pollution can be dumped into the state's waterways. The standards grew strong opposition from environmental groups, local governments, and Native American tribes. Now the Department of Environmental Protection says it will start over and work with one of those groups to produce new pollution standards. When they were first unveiled in 2016, critics said they would allow polluters to increase the level of toxic chemicals they dumped into Florida bays, rivers, and lakes. Those most at risk would be children and people who eat a lot of seafood. The 2016 standards, which were strongly supported by business and manufacturing interests, called for increasing the number of regulated chemicals allowed in drinking water from 54 to 92 chemicals and also raising the allowing limits on more than two, two dozen known carcinogens. The DEP defended the new standards by saying they were actually stricter than federal requirements and had been reviewed by scientists at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the Florida Department of Health, four Florida universities, and the California Uni Environmental Protection Agency. Once the DEP proposed the new rules, they had to be voted on by the state's Environmental Regulation Commission. By the time of the vote, there were two va vacancies on the board, one intended for a representative of the environmental community and another for a representative of local government because Governor Rick Scott hadn't appointed anyone. But before that could happen, the new rules drew legal opposition from Broward County, the city of Miami, and the Seminole Tribe. Their case was scheduled for a hearing in front of an administration law judge in April. However, with the DEP withdrawing the rules and starting over, the legal challenge is now mute. Since these rules were not yet submitted to the EPA, Florida's current water standards remain in place. She said the agency will soon unveil how it plans to proceed with drawing up new rules. Hey guys, we're back with Sign Jokes with Adrian. And Lexi. <laughs> Lexi, if you melt dry ice into a pool, can you swim without getting wet? I don't know, Adrian. Mm, think about it. There are many things that can affect the hydrosphere in a negative way, such as the burning of fossil fuels that can release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Along with this, toxic waste can be discharged in the bodies of water or any surface or subsurface body of water and can harm the hydrosphere when those chemicals are evaporated into the atmosphere. These chemicals can include sulfur dioxide and nitrogen, and when emitted, can cause acidification of rain and fresh, and fresh water, which can harm the hydrosphere as well as the ecosystem. Along with these, thermal pollution, which is when human activities cause a substantial change in temperature, contribute to negative effects on the hydrosphere. Water scarcity and its impacts on agricultural production and food security are growing concerns worldwide. As the most densely populated country with an ever-expanding demand for water and food, China's situation is the perfect example of the global picture. Northern China has been an industrial and agricultural base in the country. It is experiencing the most serious shortage of water in China. The total amount of water use increased from 243.7 billion M3 in 1994 to 254.2 billion M3 in 2002. The lack of water has become a large constraint to the development of agricultural production and even the social economy. Many areas in northern China have average water resources below 500 M3 per person. This is a very large demand in relation to the supply. With the growing demand for water from agriculture and industries, water resources have been exploited on a large scale. Pollution and environmental degradation, for example, soil and water erosion, have significantly reduced the availability of usable fresh water. With more frequent droughts enhanced and the changing climate, the potential for additional water supply will continue to decrease over the coming years. The purpose of this study is to reveal the water shortage issues, changes in water cycle, and the impacts of climate change on the hydrological cycle in northern China. The natural and conditions related to the changes in the water cycle as background in northern China will be introduced. There will be a projection of the possible changes in water resources, including water supply and demand for the different areas in northern China under the projected climate change scenarios. The adaptive capacity to changes in the water cycle will be analyzed by assessing the vulnerability of water resources to the climate change under different climatic scenarios. In the end, the possible adaptive options related to sustainable development and utilization of water resources in northern China will be discussed such as optimizing the distribution of water resources and improving the efficiency of water use, as well as pro protection and rehabilitation of ecosystems and saving water.